Welcome back, everyone, to Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast. I'm Jared. Hi, I'm Terry. Today, I did that kind of quick, but you know who we are. What are we doing today? The Conjuring 2. The Conjuring 2. Review and deep dive of a really good movie. Now, I am going to come out and say I had to rewatch it to appreciate it more. Because the first time you probably slept through it. No, it was before all that. Oh, yeah, 2016, okay. I wasn't there yet. Oh, okay. Come on, now. You probably uh, were sleeping through it. I might have, but mm -hmm. I really liked it this time around. Before we get into that, we got some promotion to do. Let's see what Jimmy J has to say about the Friday the 13th Minicon. May 13th and 14th, Blairstown, New Jersey. Friday right, and Saturday. Right behind the diner. Let's go. Friday the 13th weekend, May 13th and 14th, it is all going down right here on the grounds of the Blairstown Diner. Laura Marie Taylor, Ron Milky, Ron Sloan, Debbie Voorhees, Tracy Savage. I mean, we have a lineup of guests coming out for the weekend. And not only are we celebrating Friday the 13th, but we are celebrating 13 Fanboy. And with that being said, we have the lead actress, Haley Greenbauer herself, making her way to Blairstown. This is history in the making, folks. Get your tickets now. F13 Minicon. That eventbrite.com. That is F13 Minicon. That eventbrite.com. Jason, Jason's here early. Folks, like I said, it's going to be a killer weekend in Blairstown going down at the iconic Blairstown Diner. Be a part of the history in the making. We'll see you there. All right, R365 presents the Friday the 13th Minicon. I really don't think they should call it a Minicon anymore. No. They got enough I... people to call it a real convention. Yeah, it's going to be huge. I know. I didn't realize how much land they had back there. Yeah, and out to that video. Check them out on Facebook, R365. They got a lot more videos. I'll be putting the new one up soon because this one's getting a little stale. But uh, also, we're not done. We got some more promoting to do. Field of Screams will be open May 13th and 14th for their Friday the 13th and Halfway to Halloween show. Let's check out the trailer. All right, that video makes me want to do two things. Hmm. Go back to Field of Screams and walk the hayride. <laughs> yes. Be pretty cool, kind of like Bates. <clears throat> that would be cool. All right, let's get into it. The Conjuring 2. You ready to get into it? Yes. All right. Oh, before we forget, Brighton Asylum, also open May 13th to 14th. I'm not sure if it's both days. Yes. Is it both days? Okay. No trailer available yet, but we'll be coming soon to a Halloween Haunts Theater near you. All right. The Conjuring 2, released May 13th, 2016, directed by James Wan, a budget of $40 million, which grossed to $321.8 million. 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb, 
80% on Rotten Tomatoes and 65% on Metacritic. Not really agreeing with the Metacritic. I'm agreeing with the Rotten Tomatoes, though. Yeah, I don't pay any mind to those people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the cast. Vera Farmiga as Lorraine Warren. Patrick Wilson as Ed Warren. Madison Wolf as Janet Hodgson. Francis O'Connor as Peggy Hodgson. Lauren Esposito as Margaret Hodgson. Again, a woman with too many named kids. Benjamin Hay as Billy Hodgson. Patrick McCauley as Johnny Hodgson. Simon McBurney as Maurice Gross. Maria Doyle Kennedy as Peggy Nottingham. Simon Delaney as Vic Nottingham. Franca Potente as Anita Gregory. Bob Adrian as Bill Wilkins. <laughs> Joseph Bashara as Demon, Robin Atkin Downs as the voice of Demon, Bonnie Aarons return, or I think this is the first time we saw the nun, but we're watching it in chronological, so Barry Allen, by Barry Allen, wow, The Flash, The Flash is Valak, <laughs> Bonnie Aarons as Valak the Nun, Javier Botet as the Crooked Man, Stephen Coter as Father Gordon, all right. Go to the plot a little bit. I really like the opening, maybe because they were in Amityville. I uh, did like I that. There soft, are some parts where I didn't like. I have a soft spot in a my heart for uh, soft spot. <laughs> that spot in heart all oh, at once. Oh my god! You need to go to bed. A long day, people. Long day. All right. In 1976, paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren investigate the Amityville murders. Murders. The Amityville murders at the Amityville house. To determine if a demonic presence was truly responsible for Ronald DeFeo Jr. killing his entire family on November 13th, 1974, and the subsequent haunting incident involving the Lutz family. During a seance, Lorraine is drawn into a vision where she relives the murders and encounters a de demonic nun figure. She then witnesses Ed being impaled, badly frightening her. I will be doing a two-part special on the Amityville. I was just going to say, I think we should do that because I have a lot to say. Yes. Well, we're uh, see, right over here. It's in the works. Okay. Collecting data. This is going to be a true crime and horror haunt thing all in one. It's going to be a two-part episode. There's a lot to go over. <laughs> yeah. But that's something I've been working on. And we got to get the Ted Bundy. Yeah. I've been working on that for months. Yeah, we could do that first. That might have to be a two-part or two. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Back to The Conjuring 2. In 1977... The Hodgson family begins to experience strange occurrences in their home in the London borough of Enfield. After Janet, the second oldest of four children, plays with a Ouija board. Janet starts to sleepwalk and converse in her dreams with an entity in the form of an angry elderly man who sits in the family's chair, insisting the house is his. Eventually, the Hodgson siblings and their mother Peggy witness paranormal events terrifying them into seeking refuge with the neighbors. When the media attempts to interview the family, Janet is possessed by the elderly man, Bill Wilkins, who previously lived and died in the house. As Janet shows more signs of demonic possession, the story eventually reaches the Warrens, and their assistance is requested to prove whether or not Janet's possession is a hoax. Lorraine, fearful that her vision of Ed's death may become reality, warns him to not get involved. She has another vision of the dynamic... The, 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 why can I not say that? Dynamic. Fucking word! Vision of the demonic nun in Ed's study. The demon says its name, which Lorraine scratches into her Bible in a trance. Yeah, that was a weird scene, because you didn't know that what she was, was doing. But then it came up in the end. Yes. Yeah, that was cool. I that, thought she that was, was cool just, writing. you know carving a cross in it or something. That's what I thought, too. Or ripping it up because the demon is yeah. telling her to. While staying at the Hodgson residence, Ed and Lorraine consult other paranormal investigators, including Maurice Gross and Anita Gregory, on the legitimacy of the case. Gregory presents video evidence of Janet wrecking the kitchen on purpose, 
thereby discrediting the haunting. Based on this, Ed and Lorraine decide to leave, believing the family is lying for fame. However, they discover that the spirits of Wilkins is only a pawn being manipulated by the true demon, the powerful nun, who is seeking to break Janet's will. Lorraine realizes that her abilities have been blocked by the nun, preventing her from grasping the truth of Janet's possession. Ed and Lorraine quickly return to the Hodgson residence and find Janet possessed, and the rest of the Hodgsons locked outside of the house. Ed ventures inside alone and finds Janet at the window, ready to commit suicide. He manages to grab Janet in time, but is close to falling. Lightning strikes the tree in the yard, turning it into a stump that impales Ed in Lorraine's vision. Lorraine finds her Bible in which she wrote the demon's name, Valak. She addresses the demon by its name, successfully condemning it back to hell. Janet is freed of its possession, and Lorraine pulls her and Ed to safety. After returning home, Ed adds an item to him and Lorraine's collection, a haunted, crooked man zyotrope toy owned by Peggy's youngest child, placing it beside April's music box and the Annabelle doll. April, of course, parrying mm -hmm. from The Conjuring. All right. <laughs> The crooked man didn't need to happen. No, I was just going to say that. That's the only part I didn't like was the crooked man. It was such so horribly done. And there was no point for it in the movie. But apparently that's the next movie. Yes, I did see that. Why? I just hope they do a better job. I don't because that, that animation was terrible. I don't, I don't it was get awful. the crooked man. I don't know why they went that way. All that I remembered from this movie before the rewatch was the Crooked Man. So I guess after rewatching it, I got to like the cast again. Of course, Ed and Lorraine are awesome. It made me like the movie more. But still, the Crooked Man didn't have to fucking be. No, I don't. I still don't understand that. So I mean, why they did it? They had such good writing with her carving in a Bible to end up being her name. I didn't see that coming. Right. There was a bunch of stuff you didn't see coming. There was great foreshadowing, but why the fuck is the Crooked Man in the movie? Yeah. I mean, maybe if they did a better job on him, he wouldn't have been that bad, but it yep. was just horrible. So let's get to our scoring video, and then we'll read it off for the uh, podcast faithful. So that's the scoring. Let's get to it for the podcast. Cast, five blood splats. Without a doubt. Great acting all around. I mean, even the other demonologists were good in it. And the daughter was fantastic. She did really good in that movie. She did. I mean, she wasn't Annabelle Comes Home, Grace McKenna good, but she was good. She was good. Uh, Fear is a three. Not a scary movie. More of a mind fuck suspense type movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Special effects was great up until the Crooked Man. So three blood splats. Score five blood splats. I don't know what the Conjuring is with their movie and uh, music selection, but the score was phenomenal. Great job. Plot five. Everything lined in, so it brings an overall down to a four because of the Crooked Man. And it wasn't that scary. But it was suspense. The Crooked Man. I laughed at first when I saw it. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, what, what is what this? What the hell? What? All right, but let's get to uh, Terry's jump scares. All right, so Terry jumped three times. I'm, I'm so a, glad you're recounting. As part of the show. We gotta add you in more somehow. Me and a couple other people are working how we're gonna score you and your screams in the haunted attractions. Oh, joy. We got one on St. Patty's Day. Yes. It was a loud one, too. Wait, wait, I gotta try and get it on recording. I gotta set that up, because it's so good. All right, let's get into production of The Conjuring 2. 
In July 2013, prior to The Conjuring's release, Variety reported that New Line Cinema was already in the early stages of development of a sequel with Chad Hayes and Carrie W. Hayes writing the script. Following the positive test screenings and reviews of the first film, Final Destination 5 writer Eric Heiser Heiser? would later be brought in to Dr. The Hayes script, focusing mainly on dialogue. In January 2015, David Leslie Johnson was hired for rewrites. The film deals with the case of the Enfield Poltergeist, which took place in the London borough of Enfield from 1977 to 1979, and involved the alleged haunting of two sisters, age 11 and 13, at their mother's council house. The Conjuring 2 also touches on the Warren's most famous and most documented case, the Amityville Horror. That's what I want to add to that, is what the Warrens actually found, and rumors of dinners with Ed and Lorraine Warren before the book came out, and... Uh-huh. In July 2013, it was reported that Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson had signed on to reprise their roles from The Conjuring. This was confirmed in February 2014. On October 21, 2014, it was announced that James Wan would return to direct the sequel, and production would begin in mid-2015. In early 2015, lead actors for Megan Wilson visited Lorraine Warren at the New England Paranormal Research Center in Connecticut in preparation for their roles. On July 28, 2015, Juan officially began pre-production for the film. In August 2015, the film was granted $5.6 million in tax credits from the California Film Commission for being productive in the state. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Alright, so, and the rest is just boring filming dates that we don't really need to go over. There's usually a little more info. Not this time. Alright, favorite scenes. I love when that dresser went flying. That was... (laughs) It was really cool. It was a cool effect. Moving chair and the cops Cops running running out out, saying, hey, we can't help you. Yes. Like, (laughs) see ya. You're on your own. (laughs) The nun shadow effect. Where the Mm -hmm. nun went across the room Room. and ended up right in front of her face. Bill Wilkins underwater. Yeah, in the basement. Where she could she could see him, but um, Ed couldn't. Ed couldn't. That was pretty cool. An intense freaking ending with Ed hanging out of a tree. She's pinned up against the wall trying to get out Valak. It was good stuff. It was good. For our haunt scenes, scenes that would be great in haunted attractions. We have a mock-up of the Amityville attic room. Can't be hard to do. No. Two pizza slice windows. Lights beaming in from there. Creepy the hell enough. Because you know what that is. Moving furniture. You see that in some haunts already. Trashed room full of upside-down crosses. Easy to do. Yeah. And horrifying. I like the upside-down crosses. Me too. Crosses turning upside-down when you walk by. You can do that in a hallway effect right. with the timers. Little crosses, so you just see it at a turn. So you know you're heading for evil. Yeah, uh. as you walk by, they just flip. Yep. All right, so let's get to our fun facts here. The remaining members of the Hodgson family revisited the set. Frances O'Connor, who portrays the late mother, refused to meet them as she feared it would affect her performance. Really? I'm just going to shake my head. James Wan was offered a life-altering amount of money in order to direct The Fate of the Furious 2017. However, he turned that opportunity down to direct this film instead. I feel rejuvenated to tell a scary story one more time, Wan wrote on Instagram. What was The Fate of the Furious? Was that one of those Fast and Furious movies? I'm going to say yes. Oh, you watch that shit, not me. I stopped after. Oh, please. You just watched <laughs> the new one. <laughs> where they're taking down a submarine with a car. Okay. No, I'm looking forward to 10. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. While promoting the <laughs> film in January 2016, star Vera Farmiga was still suffering from a swollen lymph node she received during filming. Due to the intense screaming she had to perform, 
Due to technical challenges, she would sometimes do 50 takes in a row, all featuring her screaming at top of her lungs. Ow. That hurts. I know. It hurts. Some have claimed that the real Janet Hodgson is a gifted ventriloquist or has the power to manipulate voices, and she admitted to faking some events. She revealed that around 2% of the haunting was phony during an interview with the Telegraph. On the first day of shooting, a priest was brought into the set. That happens a lot. It does, and I'm actually working on that. Movie curses. I have yeah. the poltergeist set the up. poltergeist is one big one. That'll be a short splat coming soon. But they do that. The priest comes in and does a blessing. Yep. Patrick Wilson again did his own singing. The opening scene where the Warrens are seen partaking in a seance in the Amityville Horror, Lorraine is seen wearing a trench coat and a skirt. Inspiration for this costume was taken from what the real Lorraine Warren wore during a seance in real life during the Amityville case. She wore a replica of the outfit right down to the styling of the hair. Huh, that's pretty cool. One of the real-life allegations that wasn't featured in the movie was that the Hodgson children's toys were thrown around and were too hot to touch. Hmm. Yeah. The ghost boy that Lorraine sees when astral projecting and is based on the infamous Amityville photo sub- yeah, supposedly taken by Gene Campbell, a professional photographer who was part of the team who worked with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. I remember that picture. I've seen, you can find it online. It kind of does look like a boy, but it, it's hard. <laughs> I'll have to look at it. The Society of Psych- Psychical Psychiatric Research in England researched this case long before the Warrens, and it was determined as recurrent spontaneous psychokinesis. Gross and Playfair moved into the house at one point and investigated the case for over a year. The Warren showed up and stayed only a couple of days. Hmm. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. The shelf in which Ed places the strobe toy in Warren's artifacts then contains a gold a golden upside down skull which he moves to the side the skull is this um sacred treasure featured in the film vice versa vice versa it's judge it was remember judge reinhold and fred savage switch bodies oh yeah that movie vice versa it was all right ah <laughs> <laughs> huh. uh, that's pretty much wrapping up the uh Fun facts. I mean, a lot of this stuff doesn't make any sense. The school featured in the movie is really two schools located next to each other. One is Enfield Grammar School and the other is Chase School for Girls in Enfield Town Marketplace. Enfield Grammar is one of the oldest secondary schools in the UK, founded in 1558. God, that's an old school. It's time to rebuild. That is old. Wow. Wow. Well, that's all we got for the fun facts. These are the rest are just spoilers. So, I'd recommend watching The Conjuring 2. You kind of got to watch The Conjuring 1 first to watch The Conjuring 2. Yeah. But you don't really have to watch the others. I mean, it was no. It was a pretty good standalone. Got anything else? No, I do not. All right. This has been Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast where every day is haunt season. Goodbye. Bye. Oh.